advocates, questionnaires, people who are just looking for something easy to do to look like a better person, and welcome to Summer in a Pandemic, a student magazine show where today we will be focusing on social justice. Get ready for some helpful tips and tricks that can help you get more involved with your in your county and country well-being. Finally, we're doing an episode on advocacy, but I haven't been able to do much recently. I'm trying to social distance, so I can't go to any protests. Well, believe it or not, protests are still going on. However, there are other options for you if you're not comfortable with going outside. Really? Yeah, and speaking of which, up first we have Anaya with more information on upcoming protests as well as other opportunities to share your voice. Over to you, Anaya. Good day, my esteemed peers and fellow advocates. Today, we will not be talking about activities for you to be doing. Oh no, I know that's not what this segment is about today. Today, we will be talking about what you could be doing. Welcome to What Can You Do? And today, we'll be talking about the most important and oppressing issues happening today. And what events and activities you can partake in to assist in helping them. Let's get into it. Protests, they're still happening right now, but of course with the inclusion of face masks and a lot of hand sanitizer. I'm in one above, see if you can spot me. There are plenty of protests happening this week that you, you can be attending. For example, we have a Pots and Pans noise demo happening in DuPont Circle on July 25th. And of course, there are other events listed on screen. You can also search on Instagram or Facebook or any other social media to find events that you are passionate about that have protests. Go and protest. However, protests are a pretty risky matter. You will be in close proximity to a lot of people. So, if you do plan on going protesting, make sure you be safe, use proper precautions, and be willing to take that risk. Now, we're not telling you to stop social distancing, like please continue to do that. We're saying that if you're passionate enough about these issues, this is something that you can do and something you can participate in. We fully understand that people may feel uncomfortable leaving their houses, especially considering the fact that we are almost nearing 4 million cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. But luckily for you, there are tons of different forms of advocacy that you can engage in in the comfort of your own home. For example, we have letter writing campaigns. There is currently a letter writing campaign going on to the Aurora, Colorado Police Department over the death of Elijah McLean. And similar to protests, you can simply search any campaign currently going on to find issues that you are passionate about and participate. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you have a productive weekend and stay active. Okay, so I think we now have a good idea on what we can do to get involved, but what about how to get involved. What do you mean? Like, where do I start? There's so many problems that need fixing in the world. How do I go about choosing one? I mean, what organization should I help? What if I want to start my own? I need tips, advice. Okay, 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 chill out. We have something for that. We do? Yeah, we do. Up next, we have advocacy. How to get involved, where Anna Danielson, a member of Gandhi Brigade, will give us advice on how to get started in getting involved. Wait, before we get started, let me tell you a bit more about Gandhi Brigade. Gandhi Brigade is a nonprofit organization whose focus is to create communities where young people can build confidence in media skills. Okay, now over to you, Anna. Hi, uh, my name is Anna Danielson, and Heidi asked me to share some ways to get involved in social action um, to advance justice. My uh, tip for today um, is to write your thoughts uh, and your story and send it to your legislator, send it to your student representative on the Board of Education, your governor, your mayor, um, local business owners um, just write lots and lots of letters no matter how short they are you can also send them art you can send them graphic designs you can send them your photo art you can send them short videos look research your your the issue um, that concerns you or that you're worried about um, and uh, besides that 
uh, self-care is really important, um, whether you're an ally um, or whether you are directly impacted by the human rights issue. Um, you should take good care of yourself, your mental health, your, your physical health, um, and then uh, take action, write, write an email, write a tweet, and, but send, be sure that you send it directly either through social media, email, or, or snail mail um, to the people who have the power in business and in, in legislature in your area. Um, so that's my tip for today, and uh, thanks. Thank you so much. Your advice was beyond helpful. Now up next, we have quite the interesting segment. Oh, what is it? Ellen is going to be doing a social justice graphic design segment where he will analyze a popular organization's logo, design, and provide helpful tips if you're looking to design a logo of your own. Well, Don does like to keep things interesting. Anyway. <laughs> now over to you, Dylan. One of the, if not the most important visual backbone to any good social movement are the different graphic designs that get used to visually represent and define those movements, the best of which, like the Black Lives Matter sign, are able to not only visually display the movement, but are able to actually say something about the movement in their visuals. So let's talk about the different things that you can do to design a great graphic design for a social movement. The first thing you're going to want to do is to figure out what you're trying to say in relation to the movement of your graphic design and figure out the best color that's going to illustrate what you're trying to say. Maybe red to show some sort of aggressive nature, maybe blue to show a sadder nature. The reason that the Black Lives Matter signs colors work so well today is because it clearly illustrates the divide that the movement is about. There's black and white are the only two colors. It divides everything on screen and creates a very specific purpose. Another thing you're going to want to consider when designing your graphic is the composition. What shapes you're using and what do they mean in the image and where you're going to place them in the image. The rounder something is, the more nice and calm it's going to seem. While the more jagged and angular something is, the more intense and stern it's going to seem. Maybe even a bit more serious. Again, the Black Lives Matter sign does this really, really well with its straight angular lines. It shows there's a certain, there's a real certain intensity to it. But it's not like it's aggressive, it's just stern and straight to the point. And the last thing I want to bring up are type treatments. If you're going to be putting text into your graphic, then you want it to complement the composition and the colors and the meaning and all of that. If you use a cursive font for a very serious statement, that's going to be almost light and fluffy and people aren't going to take the statement seriously. You want to use something blocky and more stern, probably all in caps if you want to have a more serious statement, which a lot of social movements want. Again, the Black Lives Matter picture works so well just because it uses this very intense font that complements the very stern look of the actual composition. It's, it's something that reflects the whole thing well without being overly complicated. It just really says what it needs to say without being overbearing. That's great graphic design. Hope you guys found those tips helpful with your upcoming graphic design projects and whatnot. Anyway, that's all from me today. Back to you guys. Oh, I seem to be alone now. We all know what that means. Up next is movie slash TV Rex interviews with Heidi, where she will be talking about how to use film as a medium for advocacy and what films to watch that are good examples of that. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Movie TV Rex and Reviews where today we will be focusing on film as a form of advocacy as well as recommending some good examples for you to watch. You all have probably seen film being used as a form of advocacy in many instances such as at school, on television, or even in movie theaters. Common forms of social justice films are documentaries, PSAs, and even narrative film. I mean, they can really be anything, but at our age it's probably easiest to start off with PSAs as they do not require as much time or money, and it's easier to make multiple of them to advocate for multiple different issues. In summary, PSA, short for Public Service Announcements, are short videos that deliver a clear and concise message to the public with the objective of raising awareness of and changing the public's attitude and behavior towards a social issue. They are usually very short and not too complicated. Many are shown in schools, on YouTube as ads and separate videos, and even in movie theaters. 
The key to making a good PSA is not to overcomplicate things. Trust me on this. I've been entering PSA contests for a long time and it would never do well because it would always devise these complex storylines and plots in such a small period of time so they'd always turn out rushed. A good example of this is in my PSA The Cup, which is linked above. The time limit was 30 seconds, yet I tried to create this whole story with a talking cup where the girl sees flashes of her future and there's a party and she learns this whole lesson. Basically, my point is if you watch it, you'll see it was way too much. And unsurprisingly, this video did not place. However, it is still important to have a message, but not just a message, a clear message. I made another PSA in the same year called I'm the Victim, where if you look, the entire video is just of a girl walking down a hallway. As she walks, she reads awful comments of herself on social media. She was the victim of abuse, but is blamed for it because of how she dresses, as revealed in the comments. Then, someone decides to stand up for her, and the whole flow of comments change. By the time she reaches the end of the hallway, she realizes that she is not the one to be blamed for the abuse, that she is the real victim, hence the name. This video won first place in its contest and fan favorite. Notice a difference? Obviously, there are more professional examples that you can view as inspiration. I just thought it might be nice to see some examples from a fellow teenager. But that's not my point. My point is don't overthink it. Just say what you want to say. However, if PSAs aren't your thing, you can also try doing a short film with an overarching social justice theme or a documentary as they are more flexible in lengths. You know. Gandhi Brigade has a program that helps to assist young filmmakers to teach them how to make documentaries. I participated in their program last year and assisted in the creation of a documentary about the effects of phone addiction. You can check out their channel for more examples and join their program to learn more. Did I mention they're free? In summary of what I learned in the program, documentaries rely heavily on interviews and the voice of the people. So to create a successful documentary, you must first pick your topic, then create a list of questions, ask a large range of people, and then come up with some B-roll for your video. Just to clarify, B-roll is the video that you see placed on top of people talking that is related to what they are referring to. You've seen me use it in many of my videos, including this one. Speaking of interviews, up next we have Sedatia, who is interviewing some student activists about their experiences and issues they are passionate about. Since I've talked so much, I've put up the movie Rex next to me, as well as in the description. Now over to you, Sedatia. Um, I think that there is a variety of social justice topics that I'm, that I like advocate for and that I'm interested in, and I think they all intersect each other. But um, the one that I'm more gravitated towards is um, immigration. And as an immigrant myself, I I find myself I find that to be a topic that I advocate more than like other topics. I advocate by um, through social media. Um, it's like a pretty like common thing for teen activists to get their message across is through social media. I work with an organization that um, sends like letters to those in power to really get these um, pressing issues across to you know state senators, um, our governor, and things like that. Um, I think like an actual like letter like delineating what's going on with this certain social issue really gets across um, this, an idea of wanting change where we are. For me, I just need to navigate to help people to make sure like they are safe and make sure they have like some community to their friend, family and parents member. Yeah, so I, I think what we're seeing now, um, ever since, you know, May, is that not all, but like a, a large portion of like people online are, you know, spreading awareness about, you know, Black Lives Matter, um, immigration, sexual assault awareness. And, you know, I think that's actually a really good thing in um, for our generation because we rely on a lot of information provided us through the internet things may be misguided and things may be inaccurate but what i what i've been seeing so far is really great and i've learned a lot of things that i was really adept in that i was honestly kind of ignorant towards because i wasn't fed this information through you know school or by the media so i'm I think what we're seeing right now is really good for our generation.
Um, yeah, I think Gen Z, um, like Gen Z has a weird way of like spreading social issues. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, I think like when we use our generations, like sort of social angst to really like um, bring about change and we can all rally around towards this, towards like change. And, and I think that um, social media can honestly be our biggest bet into um, creating a world that we want to see. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation. Even the random segment was political today. The random segment? What are you talking about? Uh, this isn't funny anymore. What is this? Our fourth show? And you're still denying the existence of that the thing that comes before the outro. Thing? You're going to have to be more specific than that. The, you know, the, the, the thing, the video, the, the something that has nothing to do with the show whatsoever. It comes right before the outro. It's your doing and you know it. I never put anything there. Anyway, now, Heidi, you're getting too off topic. Did you forget the focus of our show today? But, what, I, the... <laughs> never mind, I didn't. We hope you all found today helpful. And consider commenting below what issues you're passionate about and what actions you're thinking of taking. We would love to hear about it. And lastly, thank you to Gandhi Brigade and its other organizations who have assisted us on our episode today. You should check them out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. This was Summer in a Pandemic, pandemic. a okay. student magazine okay. show. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just keep that as the intro, the outro, please? Could you? Yeah, <laughs>